Hey everybody, Nick here. In the last video, I gave you a quick look at this Zine Meister 85 millimeter T1.3 cinema lens. In this video, we're gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive, a little bit more of a full review, including a look into comparing similar lenses, pricing, availability, and who these lenses are for. But before I talk about all that, I have to ask a very particular question. Why do these lenses exist? I don't mean what's their purpose, I think we understand that well enough. I mean, why were they actually manufactured? And here's what I mean. When I visited the Scorpio booth at Cinegear, their primary product is Technocranes, and the folks at the booth were very knowledgeable about the cranes, the differences between them, pricing, rental rates, etc. But Scorpio also makes some extremely good anamorphic cinema lenses. These are lenses that cost northwards of $40,000 each. Some are full frame lenses, some even cover 65 millimeter format. This is serious stuff. And yet no one at the booth knew almost anything about them. They had like two dozen lenses sitting in a glass case. So there I am standing in front of like a million dollars worth of high end anamorphic glass and no one could tell me anything about them. When they were made, flare color, close focus, cost per lens, nothing, nothing. Like, Finally, one employee tracked down a second employee who tracked down a third employee. That third employee pulled out a sheet of paper out of her back pocket and she was able to tell me a little bit of specification about some of the lenses. And I'm not trying to pick on the Scorpio employees. I'm just saying you never hear about those lenses. You don't hear about productions using them or rental houses announcing that they now have them available. So I had to ask, how did those Scorpio lenses come to exist in the first place? Developing such a lens is not an inexpensive or accidental affair. Someone went through extraordinary effort and expense to design, develop, prototype, test, and manufacture these things, and yet you don't hear a word about them. It blows my mind. So now we come to the Zine Meister, and it's not the same story as the Scorpio lenses, but it's in the similar ballpark. The Zine Meister Primes are some of the fastest and sharpest full-frame cinema primes on the market, and yet there is precious little information or demo footage about them anywhere. No one seems to have gotten their hands on them, so that's why I pestered Zine, and fortunately, they agreed to lend me one. So a big thanks to Zine for sending me these lenses and letting me help spread the word about what they are and what they do. So what are they all about? Quite simply, the Zine Meister lenses are some of the most advanced and modern glass that you will find anywhere. Rokinon has been in the business for almost half a century, and although they're often thought of as the third-party brand, I think people make a big mistake when they write them off. The lenses are fantastic. Now, in the stills world, there can be good reason to stick with native brand lenses, as the electronic and autofocus integration is typically best when the lens is made by the same manufacturer as your camera body. But if you're focusing manually, which is the case for most of the cinema world, it really doesn't matter who makes your lens in terms of the autofocus performance. So that means we can be a little bit freer to just evaluate a lens on its own merits. So let's do that. Right off the bat, I'll say that the image this lens makes is gorgeous. I absolutely love 85 millimeter lenses in general, and I love the look of this Zine T1.3 lens, especially wide open. It's very sharp, edge to edge, wide open. Bokeh is super smooth, which I personally love. It doesn't have the onion skin texture you often see with modern aspherical designs. Flare is tasteful, minimal to my liking generally. I can't speak to what the other focal lengths look like or how consistently they compare to this 85 millimeter lens. I'm especially curious about that 24 millimeter lens, which has no stills equivalent in Rokinon's lineup. If we move on to body design, this thing is a tank. As I mentioned in the first look, this is a big, robust, chunky lens body. It has titanium at the front and rear of the barrels. It's definitely built to stand up to the rigors of filmmaking. Focus pulling is easy and precise. The iris ring prioritizes the wide end, meaning there's a longer run from T1.3 to T2 than there is to the next stop, to the next stop, and so forth. Personally, I really like that. So if you tend to shoot at wider apertures like I do, this lens is built to accommodate. But it's also guilty of one of my pet peeves, which is when the lens housings are substantially bigger than they need to be. Generally, you don't need the barrel to be a whole lot bigger than the largest element, which is often the front one, 
but you also want your cine lenses to have consistent body sizes across the set. So commonly, a lens series will make sure that the housing is big enough just to accommodate the largest element across the entire series, and then make it just a little bit bigger than that. And then for all the other elements with smaller lenses, the barrels are just gonna be a little bit bigger than they need to be, or, Sometimes if most of the lenses have roughly consistent element sizes, but there's just one outlier, they'll just make that body a little bit different. So that's like the case with the Cook SP3s, where most of them have these tiny little barrels, but then the 100 millimeter lens gets a larger front barrel to accommodate the large front element. I really like that idea as it lets you be as compact as possible. And you can always adapt the fronts if you want them all to be the same in the SP3 series. But the Zine Meister, unfortunately, kind of does the worst of all worlds. It has this massive barrel design, larger than all the lenses from 24 to 85 millimeters, way bigger than needed. And then it also has an outlier body for its 14 millimeter entry. I could be wrong, but it seems to me that all of these lenses are bigger than they need to be. Perhaps Zine is shooting for a particular aesthetic, like big lens good, this big budget product, but I wish they hadn't. But despite my gripe, there is a lot to like here. The Meister bodies feature the Cook iData protocol, meaning they can communicate iris focus and even lens correction data directly to your camera. They have glow-in-the-dark markings, which is very handy indoors. Everything looks to be extremely well made. It looks like Zine was really trying to push the idea of a premium lens with all the bells and whistles. And I hate to say it, but I think placing them in that category was a mistake adding titanium, adding electronics, making the body so large. These things increase your material cost, your development cost, and therefore drives up the price of the lenses. These come in at almost $6,000 each. And that's a lot to swallow for a brand that's ultimately known as a budget or third-party lens maker. So that brings us to the elephant in the room. Zine seems to be very touchy about the optical design here. Roganon makes a series of stills lenses called the Special Performance Series, which are F1.2 full-frame stills lenses. There's an 85, 50, 35, and 14, just like the focal lengths and F numbers of the Zine Meister series, though there's no 24mm lens in the SP line and there is a 24mm Meister. But the elements appear to be the same size, appear to have the same coatings, but Zine is adamant that they are not the same optical design. And yet, they publish optical block designs for the SP lenses, but they won't show them for the Meister lenses. And when I asked if they could give me something that would verify the formulas are different, they just said, you can verify it because we're telling you. Not the most confidence-inspiring explanation I've ever heard. Also, this 85 millimeter lens breathes quite a bit, which is another hint that it was likely derived from a stills design, even if Rokinon wants to insist it isn't exactly the same formula. Now, I can't speak for the other lenses since I haven't used them, but it seems to me most likely that the 85 millimeter is very much like its SP counterpart. Zine does not want you to associate that far lower budget price series with their big boy cinema lenses. And again, I think that's a mistake. I think rather than trying to pretend they're cook, they should stay in the budget prime space that they themselves pioneered with the original Zine series. Because when we look at this lens on its merits, it's very good. This 85mm T1.3 is super sharp wide open. It has beautifully smooth bokeh, virtually free of any texture or onion skinning. Minimal flaring, which skews a very lovely pale blue. Minimal chromatic aberration, that ultra-fast T1.3 speed. These are great, great lenses. I really enjoyed using this 85mm lens, and I'd love to see the full set of them. If the rest of the set performs like this 85, then they might be some of the best lenses on the market today. But, 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 I think folks will have a hard time picking Meister over other options given the price tag and the weight. These are about two kilograms each across the set, almost a pound heavier than the T1.4 Aural Primes, and almost three times the price. If Zine had chosen instead to make these in a more compact, stripped down body without the frills, Honestly, just take the SP stills versions, add Focus and Iris gears and 95 millimeter fronts. They'd clock in at about 1,500 grams, sold for about $1,500 each. That would be stunningly good. Such a set would dominate the budget spherical space. But in their current form, they feel a bit too big, too pricey, but ultimately still very interesting. So with all that in mind, 
what route will I choose to go? Do I think they're worth buying anyway, despite my complaints? Do I think you could just get away with buying the SP stills lenses and converting them to cinema use? Or would I ultimately go with something else entirely? This is a question I asked myself, and I'll tell you how I answered it. On the one hand, buying the SP stills lenses would have its benefits. They're smaller, they're lighter, they're only about $600 each, and they still appear to deliver a great image. But the stills lenses have their drawbacks as well. First, the iris is electronic only, and the barrels terminate in a hood mount, so adding a map box would be a bit of a pain. The focus ring isn't cylindrical, it bulges out in this little rubber thing, so adding a focus gear would be a challenge. And worst of all, there's no 24 millimeter lens in the SP series. That one appears to have been developed just for the Meister line and not ported to the SP line. So in the SP stills line, there's a 10 millimeter F3.5, 14 millimeter F2.4, then 35, 50, 80, 5, all at F1.2. And those two wider lenses have fixed hoods, so good luck getting a matte box on those. Not quite the set I'd want to have, even if I could get them properly converted and all working well. Now, looking to other alternatives in the cinema space. There's no other T1.3 full frame set that I know of, and certainly nothing this sharp or modern. The closest would be the series you've heard me talk about many times before, the DZO film Arl T1.4 set. And that set has a lot of benefits for me. Smaller, lighter, less expensive, and uniform 95mm barrels all the way through the set from the 14mm to the 180mm. Sure, they don't have Cook Eye data or titanium front ring, but neither of those things matters that much to me. The Meister lenses do have that extra little bit of speed, and that's something to consider, but ultimately the RL set just has so much going for it. Now, I can't speak definitively, as I've only tested one of Zine's Meister lenses and only two of DZO Film's RL lenses, but I think each manufacturer has a good enough reputation for me to trust that the other lenses in each set will perform with a reasonable degree of consistency. So, personally, for the price of one and a half or so Meister Primes, I'd rather have a set of five Aural Primes plus the case. That's the choice I would personally make. In fact, it's the choice I did personally make. Stay tuned. And I think most people in my position would probably make a similar choice, at least if it was just between those two sets. But an entire full frame T1.3 from 24 millimeters to 85 millimeters is pretty interesting and definitely worth your attention if you're in the market for some clean, fast, spherical cine lenses. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. I am really grateful to Zine for lending me this lens. It really does deliver an absolutely beautiful image. They've said they may be willing to send me other focal lengths in the future. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see me talk about. I am especially curious about that 24 millimeter T1.3. Anyway, I have absolutely enjoyed my time with this 85 millimeter lens. It is truly lovely and it is great to shoot with. Hit me up in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to know about these. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.